to yeah. do uh, in my position in Brazil because the passion is all in the front of the reason. Right. So the, the people all the time think about uh, if the club is the most important thing for me. So the club is more important than my family. Many of the <laughs> times you can see that. So uh, they, they treat uh, the decisions, they treat the, the games like a religion, like uh, it's the most important thing that I have in my life. So Palmeiras must win, Cruzeiro right. must win. And... Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Sporting Global Podcast. And today I'm here with Alex Matos. And Alex, how are you? How's life and happy 2022, I guess, as well? New year. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> you too. Happy 2022. I'm very uh, good, all good. And the, the life, the, the professional life, the personal life. And... Uh, Thanks so much for the invitation. Thanks so much for participating for this. It's a pleasure for me. And uh, well, let's do it. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure having you part of uh, the podcast, of course. And I mean, like you have a vast experience from the Brazilian football industry and a lot of stuff we're going to talk about, you know, as, as you know, how I have a lot of experience being a sports director for, for some major clubs. And we'll touch upon that as well, alongside with like some key challenges, some key tips. So I think it's going to be a really interesting, you know, episode, a lot of good stuff that we're going to talk about. And uh, I'm just, you know, wanted to take you know, take us a little bit back to how your journey, you know, in the sport industry started. Like, take us a little bit through how it all began and like, sort of like what you've been through in your career. Yeah, you, you know, I'm a Brazilian. So yeah. most of the Brazilian grew up dreaming in being a player or something in football. Right. And uh, for me, it's the same. Yeah. And uh, I tried to, to play, but I was not able my my quality is not so good, so I try to, to think in, to be inside the, the sport, the, the, the soccer, the football industry. And uh, I, I found out in that in, in the key moment in my life, an opportunity to go inside in a, in a club, America. It's a small club in my home city, Belo Horizonte. Right. And uh, I started in America in 2005 and uh, I followed my dream mm -hmm. that uh, I had for my whole life so and uh, I had the opportunity to be an assistant of the president of America and for three years and uh, like a volunteer without right. any payment and uh, because it was my dream right. and uh, I used to work in a, in a gym and uh, well I and uh, I, I get my dream and I, I was so exciting to be inside because it's too difficult to go in right. because it's a specific kind of job. Mm -hmm. So I started doing whatever they, they need me. So in marketplaces and in, in the soccer department and well, whatever the, the president of America asked me to do, I did. Right. because I, I really wanted to be inside the club. Mm -hmm. And uh, after one year, two years, like I told you, like a vol volunteer, I, I could show them that I, I was prepared to be inside in the soccer department. Right. And after like a sport director, because mm -hmm. the situation in America was so bad, especially financial, financial problems, Right. And uh, well, I, I, I could be at the exactly time and they need a, a, a person to do the job like a volunteer, like a, to to was my dream. So I could really uh, be blessed for God to to get this opportunity. Right. Oh, it makes make, makes a lot of sense, and I think it was important too that you talk a little bit about, um, you know, starting volunteering. You know, and sort of like, okay, I, whatever you need me to do, I'll do it, right? Yes. Because I want to be part of this. This is what I want to do. Yes. 
And I think that's a very important step and, and sort of like showcasing, you know, what that leads to. But so after America, um, after working for America, like just what was your journey after that? And, and sort of like where you are? Yeah, until I stayed point. there for seven years. It was like a school, a really school, because yeah. as I told you, uh, I, I had to run uh, through the, all departments of the club so I could learn from for all the, the things that we need in the future. Right. And after seven years, I took a decision to, to go out from America, not the, the, the football industry, but for America because I was so, so tired. And uh, seven years, and we got all the, the goals that we, we, we dreamed together, me and the president of that time. Yeah, and uh, we we started in the second division of the state, mm. and seven years after we were in the first division, the national division. So nice. was a big big uh, step for the, the the America, big goal that we dreamed and we got it. So, and after that, uh, I told him that uh, I need to new challenges. Uh, I di actually, I didn't know where, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I felt that uh, I was uh, need something different, okay? Mm. And uh, I, I, I worked so hard to, to do the, the right things, to learn, right. so humble to learn, to, to, to be inside. And uh, well, I just uh, went out for the, the America and I stayed for three months just waiting some opportunity and uh, after three months cruzeiro it's a another dimension because it's a really a, a big club in brazil mm -hmm. the same city and oh, the president okay. of cruzeiro, yes and the president of cruzeiro as, uh, asked me to invited me to to go as a sport director of cruzeiro it's a, a huge new level for me right, right. And, uh, well, it was so 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 great time and three years and three years we we did of course not just me right with a lot of people many yeah. people that participated in that this project in cruzeiro and the, we were so grateful to to want two brazilian national national leagues and uh, wow. it was really a, a nice nice time oh, okay i i i can't imagine and obviously you know um and, and Alex, you, you have a lot of experience, you know, as a sport director, you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, some of the clubs as, as Chris Aero and, and America, but also, you know, been with the Club Atletico Mineiro and, and SC Palmeiras. And sorry if I'm saying some of this wrong in the name side, but hopefully. No, it's okay. um, but lo looking a little bit back, I guess, in, in a sense, on your journey as a sport director, um, what have been some of your key highlights, you know, through as a sport director, I guess you can look at it both from like a sport perspective, but also maybe from a business perspective. So like separating it a little bit. Yes. Yeah, of course, they have the big highlights, the, the key highlights always in, in the football clubs mm. is uh, uh, the titles. Right? Right. The, the, of course, they all the people think the supporters, the journalists, yeah. they, they think about the titles. They, they want the results. Yeah, the result always. is a, a titles. Now, of course, I have some examples here. I show it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the the all the people think, but but actually, in my position, I'm like a management. Uh, I'm like a manager of people and process. Mm. So for me, the title is the consequence. Of course, right. the, the many process that me and other people doing together to <laughs> get the goal. Yeah. The goal is the title. Right. And uh, of course, my responsibility is not just to take care of the, the players or the, the coach or the, the people around the, depart the soccer department. Mm. So you have to, I have to take care of the all things about the department, the communication, the, how is the, the field, how is the stadium, so the, the supporters, so the how how the is the for example the the health department mm -hmm. so all the the information come to me and i have to 
to to flow of the information make it get all the departments to be a consistent um, information for the to get the goal so right so so difficult to to explain but uh, yeah many things you have to to do all the time and uh, for me of course the titles and uh, in palmeiras in cruzeiro was the the get the self esteem of the supporters mm. because both of them they are so down about the moment mm. and the uh, hard work we put them in so happy level so it was the for me the, the key highlights right no and, and i mean like that that's sort of like the beauty i guess of sports and and football you know in general too is sort of like the ability it, it has to bring out so much emotions in people and and yes. i guess we, we can all know and, and you know this better than than anyone how passionate brazilians are about football in particular <sighs> so i know especially in brazil especially right in and so people. so you have just just like a religion story. yeah just, just give us a story on this on like feeling that passion and sort of like that brazilian oh, a fan again, it, it, yes it's, it's a really really challenging to yeah. do uh, in my position in brazil because the passion is all in the front of the reason right so the the people all the time think about uh, if the club is the most important thing for me so the club is more important than my family many of the <laughs> times you can see that so uh, they they treat uh, the decisions they treat the the games like a religion like uh, the most important thing that i have in my life so palmeiras must win cruzeiro right. must win and it's impossible to win all the games it's impossible to win all the the league so right. the championship so uh, to show them that we are trying the best to get the their dreams right it was it's uh, uh titles yeah. uh, and uh, they they be confident that you are really involved mm. in this kind of situation is the, the the most challenging uh job that we have and uh well it's a lot of histories uh for example in in cruzeiro when I hired an uh, important uh, player, mm-hmm. that there, for example, it's a, I used to be a, he, he's playing at the moment, but he used to be a really good player. And uh, when I hired him in Rio de Janeiro, and I come from, and I, I come back to Belo Horizonte, and uh, in the airport to like a reception for him, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was about 6,000 people waiting for a player no it's a really uh, emotion <laughs> moment and i was next to the there and the people screaming shouting that there that and, and when they they saw me they they say oh matos matos man it was so exciting the uh, emotion that uh, uh, I take for my road life. And uh, of course, when you have a commemoration for the titles and right. the things, then it's really, really, really nice. Oh, but it, it, I think it's um, very uh, cool to hear as well that, of course, like that the fans, you know, obviously they're there, you know, main for like the players, right? And like to see they're there, right? They're at yes. the right? And like, oh, that's super great. But the fact that they're also acknowledging you in that moment and say like, hey, you're part of yes. that story and journey. I, I, I mean, like, I can only imagine what that must feel, you know, and yes. how, how amazing that must be. When you are in the stadium, about 6,000 people uh, shouting your name, it's a, it's a different feeling that you, you feel inside in your heart. It is really different. I, I, I can't imagine. And, and I mean, like, I, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of teams and, and, people you know out in in europe as well without neglecting you know their their fan behavior and you know the importance of of the sport but you know it, it's something different you know once you get to you know yes. south america and brazil and like you know just the passion that that shows there so i hope one day i'll be you know lucky enough to to watch it 
you know yeah you should, and, you uh, and, and and feel that passion you know because it's uh, it's always cool getting that uh, experience that you're talking about and and then and feeling how much it means because i think everyone that loves football and, and, and sports just can feel that in their body but it's not just always as visible i think in in some cultures like the regions are a little bit more you know quiet on that side but yes uh, that doesn't mean we don't like it you know <laughs> it's just a little yeah, bit you should you should come to brazil and see the atmosphere the so it's really 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 nice and really yeah. you it's 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 a, you should go you should come well we'll, we'll, we'll make that happen you know and in after covid <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, but, but you know, even in Europe, in, for example, Italy, Spain, yeah, uh, United Kingdom, so yeah. they have a lot of passion. 100%. Uh, in Portugal, they have a lot of passion. So yeah. in, in the soccer industry is, is so big. For me, it's the, the biggest industry, the sports industry in the world. 100%. It's because the passion of the people is insane. Yeah. So that's the reason for me. No, 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 no doubt about it. And, and I wanted to talk a little bit more, I guess, in a sense of just some of the major challenges that you have had to solve, you know, in your director journey to, to sort of like get where you are. And obviously, you know, in that sense to, uh, you know, you have, you know, voted as the best executive director in sports in Brazil four times, you know, first of all, congratulations with that. You already talked about Thank like you. some of your t titles, over 18 major titles, you know, under your belt as well. And I guess there's a lot of, you know, other as well with like youth, youth teams and stuff like that. But talking a little bit about your, your, uh, you know, some of the major challenges that you've been facing on your journey. So I get, get to that position of being voted as some of the best yes. directors in the sport. Yeah, a sporting director, like I told you, is a manager of people and process. Mm -hmm. And when you have uh, 40, 50 uh, people that you have to manage, you have to take care about the vanities, you have to take care about the, the, the difference between them. So I think the managed people is the most difficult challenge that he, he, all the times you, you have to take care right and uh to get all the people not just the players the 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 coach the the doctors the all the people involved all the the the, the club the people who take care about the finance the people the the lawyers so all the people involved all the people to get the same goal. Mm. That's the most difficult challenge that we have when you, you only are in my position right. in clubs. In Brazil, I think around the world. Yeah, and, and, and I think you know, it's, it, it's important what you're talking about here is, is that you're involving you know, the finance, the lawyers, like you know, yes. those people that maybe are not so actively involved in the it's you know important. the game, right? And in the sports, and that they know that okay, your work and the, the work that you're doing is part of reaching that goal of of you know winning the trophy or whatever, you know, the goal that the team has and understanding the importance of that. And yeah, I think that's a very really crucial part. part. Yeah, because all are involved, all the departments are involved in, mm -hmm. to, to get the goal. For right. example, the finance department, if they don't pay, so you right. have a problem. If the, the security department, the, the doctors, the, the health department, the, the lawyers to, to, to make the contracts, mm. uh, so uh, the marketing department, all the, the, this information from the departments come to me and right. I have to, to pass through the disinformation for the whole crew, the whole squad, the whole people that all the time in the, the, the soccer department, the football department. So <laughs> it's really important that all of them uh, have the same, the same goal, the same uh, meaning, the same uh, things to all happens. Uh, the, sorry. The same, uh, how can I say, go to yeah, to yeah. to do the best for the players. Can the real star are the players, so they can do their jobs. Right. 
way. Okay. Yeah, no, it makes 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 total sense. And 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 you mentioned a lot about obviously you know managing people and processes, right? Which is sort of like you say is your your two primary thing. And yes. if you wanted to dive a little bit into, I guess the the process side of it, like just. Can you give us some sort of example of like what kind of process are we talking about? Yes. Like, just just give us an idea of like what what you're thinking here, because I think yeah, yeah. for for those young people here that are listening and, and just like yes. okay, what do you accept? What do you mean about process, right? What kind of process are we talking about? Yeah, you have a, a many kind of process. Yeah. Um, the, the, this football department, for example, to hire a player. Right. How can I hire a player? You have to. You have to. Uh, uh, actually have the process to do that for example the first the first step is come from the the coach okay right. the technical department they ask me a um, striker for example right and uh, after that you have many people that analyze all the the history of the striker okay the how he's playing now uh, how much it costs all the things and then the sport director do the business asking they if i can uh, buy him how much is and i have to talk to the finance department right and after that all the things uh good i I have to to talk to health department the exams so after that you have to to sign uh, i have to talk to the ceo and after that, I have to, to, to sign and tell the president or the owner. In Brazil, we have a president. We don't have an owner in most of the clubs. Right. Uh, our right. public association. Yep. So I have to ask the president to, to sign. And uh, so you have all the process to get a, a, a new player. Right. For example, the youth academy. <laughs> How a young player, 9, 10 years old, go through the, all the process to be one day a uh, professional, mm. to be in your the, your first first team, right? Uh, it's a long time. It's a long long uh, period. So it's a ten years. So you have mm, to make your process to this formation of this guy. Mm-hmm. So physical, uh, technical, uh, intellectual, right. and uh, all the steps. So one day, one day, maybe this player that comes uh, th- that started his career in, in the, the, that club, in nine years old, one day become uh, a star of your project. I right. don't know. So yeah. you have many process that you have to really maintain all the process mm-hmm. to get this. So two ex- examples that uh, I can tell you. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's just like showcases again, like the involvement of the other departments, like the, how yes. like each each department is so crucial. Just again, like okay, so you were saying like, okay, we need a player, but understanding it's not just the conversation between, you know, uh, the, 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 I guess like the you know the, the the coaches and then you and then that's it you know it, it it's all these extra you know involvement for like you know as you yes. say the contract the negotiation the the the, the analysis, what is this you know process right all the time process all oh. the time <laughs> so the key is the process right all, all the time when I I was teaching some some lessons for the students in in CBF Academy mm-hmm. in a football university in Brazil. Yeah, uh, I tell the people uh, look after all the process. Mm. That's the key. That's the key. Right. If you have the process, you, the chance that you make a mistake is really lowest than we, when you think just in passion or things like that. So, right, keep uh, keep your eyes in the process. Yeah, it makes make, makes total sense. It's a, it's a great advice. And and I wanted to dive a little bit more into you know your. Uh, you know your 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 work here as an instructor as you were saying like you know working uh, as an instructor for some of the upcoming sports leaders you know in brazil through the cbf academy as you mentioned and the university of the, the football and, and i wanted to like if you could lay out i guess besides you know trying to get an awareness of, of the processes and understanding that what are some of the key requirements that these upcoming leaders will need to possess like what are some of the skills that they need to to have in place for me, the most important is the resilience. 
Mm. Okay, because as I we are talking about in this time, you have many uh, challenges that you face all the time. The right. players, the the process, the flow of information. Mm. So you have to communicate to your supporters. You have to 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 help the the players to be good for the, their jobs. So you have to ask the the marketing department to to do or to not do uh, some kind of uh, marketing in, in that time. So mm -hmm. resilience and uh, to know that we work in a passion job. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's impossible if you if you don't think about the passion. It's impossible. You just ah, I'm a, I have to all the times make my decision by reason. It's, it's impossible. Right. You must think what your client wants. Mm -hmm. And your client is the support. They are all passion. Right. So uh, I think uh, 25% of your decision, you must be in the order person, the, 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 the supporters. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the 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 difficult. So you must be resilient to the make range. the decision all the time. And and I guess like you know just talking about decisions that you know and, and that's literally like a quarter of your decisions like goes based on you know what the supporters kind of want and what do you think is is best for the supporters. And and I guess like that leads to like um, I guess in a sense what 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 are what are some of the examples of, of those kind of decisions where I guess the voice of and the, the 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 voice of the fan and sort of like what they're thinking is so important. Like, what what are some examples you can bring up? For example, when you have an offer for a, a star, a, a idol, mm. and you, you have to to make a decision to sell him or not, mm. it, it, how <laughs> how how is the the size of the impact right. in your your project? Right, you know. Because especially in Brazil, that we have many financial problems in the clubs in Brazil, sure. okay. Sure. And uh, one of the the survivor is when you have to to get money from the sales, okay. <laughs> and uh, to explain the people, the support that you have to to sell this specific player, a right. big star, and uh, to explain them that most important than this star B here is the survival of the club. Mm -hmm. So this is a typical example that you have to, to think, well, uh, how is the size of the impact in my clients, in my supporters? So I have to think how much is cost for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it's so, so that's really. <laughs> One example that I have to think like them yeah. to make the decision. So I have to think this price that they, they are offering to me is enough to, to, to not impact my environment. Right. So that, that's a one example that I can tell yeah, you. But I think that's also quite interesting, right? Because obviously, you know, I, I, I completely get it from, uh, you know, like fan loyalty and sort of like the importance this this player has you know maybe on jersey sales and like a lot of this you know sort of engagement right which also brings revenue to the club but but i'm thinking also like how do you again then sort of you know say it's a european club like big european club that buys this player right like like how do you essentially then sort of i guess in a sense um come on the table and say like well it, 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 it helps the player and sort of like the reputation of the club too, in a sense where, you know, okay, if we, we, we develop these kind of, you know, young, talented superstars to go abroad, that looks good on the club too, you know, in a sense of, you know, that, that's sort of like, I guess. The Brazilian support. Don't think that. <laughs> Is that I mean, that as, Yes, as I told you, as I told you, it's like a religion. For example, the supporter for Palmeiras, for yeah. Cruzeiro, for Corinthians, yeah. for São Paulo, they think they they have the the, the rights to think that the, the the Cruzeiro, São Paulo, Corinthians, well, 
they are the biggest club in the world. So why they you it. have to sell my player for Real Madrid? All for right, example? got it. <laughs> I don't care about Real Madrid. I don't care about uh, what um, because Real Madrid is buying a player for São Paulo. I don't care about that. I want my my club uh, always being the best. I yeah. want my club always uh, get in winner. Right. Win, the title so yeah. they don't care about that got it got it well i mean like that's why we ask the questions you know we gotta yes. <laughs> categorize it um and that's so, the challenge the most challenge yeah. because that, that's the reason i told you the resilience mm -hmm. to understand all the point of views right right okay you have the president that they need the money the club the ceo ask you because they need money the player they want to go to Europe, for example, because yeah. they, of course, they, they sure. the salaries go in, yeah. in twice, twice. Well, so and uh, you have to understand the passion. You have to understand your, the supporters. Mm -hmm. You have to make the decision, and this decision is your fault <laughs> or your goal. So, <laughs> if if after the the sale, for example, you. you you, you sell a, a player and uh, two, three months after mm -hmm. you not win the, the title, it's your fault, man. <laughs> Why you sold the, this player? Right. So that's the... the so that's the where the difference. resilience comes into place. Huh? Yes. Makes, yes. Makes, makes a lot of sense. And uh, I, I wanted to just move a little bit on as well before we dive into, I guess, like more... Um, you know, tips again for, for, for students, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the book that, you know, you, you, you've written, everything starts with a dream. So can I like, tell me a little bit more? Tudo começa com sonho. Everything starts in a dream. Yeah. In Portuguese. There you go. But they have in English, the second edition right. now in English. Okay. So, you so can find it in a book and things like that. Yeah. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the book, you know, kind of like, you know, um, what, what can people learn from it and like, who are, who are you essentially targeting with this book? And I guess, like, what, what is the main purpose behind the book? You know, when I started writing, mm -hmm. was because many of young guys come to me asking me, Matos, how can I be like you? I want to be a sport director like you. Right. How can I do? And uh, what do I have to do to be like you? So mm -hmm. I started writing my career, so at the first moment, the, the, the first page of the book, my career uh, through the clubs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I talk about uh, some backstage that the people always asking about the right. backstage of the titles, backstage of uh, when you hire a, a player, when you sell a player, so things like that is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I, I wrote some backstage, interesting backstage, behind the scenes, né? because all the people don't know what happened in the dressing room. In, right. So uh, the people are so excited to know the, the, the things like inside. So I, I wrote some. And, uh, and after that, I, I, I explained some kind of managing inside the clubs, mm -hmm. the, my, my, uh, my responsibilities and uh, all the things we are talking about in here. So it's a really good, it's not just because I wrote it, but it's a really good book to understand the, the sporting directors and to understand main, main backstage things, right. things like that. No, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And as you were talking about too, it's sort of like giving that um, you know, roadmap or insights to, to learn more about the processes and yes. again, like the, the resilience that you need to be in that position that you are because it yes. impacts, you know, so many people and so much emotions and you have to, you know, understand all these pieces of the puzzle in order to make, yes. make it work. And in Brazil, they think that uh, in Spock Director, all the time they, they think about we are just to hire players is not this my yeah. responsibility. There's a lot of things that I, I have to do day yeah. by day. I think in Europe, no, they, they know about right. uh, the, the GM, the general manager, sure. all the things that you have to do. But uh, it's, it's really interesting if you 
if you if you read, is really interested to understand and think about all the responsibilities. Right, and and I wanted to then go a little bit, you know, to sort of like wrap up the podcast here. Uh, you know, for for these kind of you know sports students and young professionals, you know, maybe with a dream one day of of being a top sport director, you know, maybe in Europe, maybe in Brazil, maybe in you know, whatever path of the world that is. Um, what kind of I guess like tips would you give them on, on their pathway? Uh, just I mean, like we talked about, you know, the resilience. We talked about you know processes, uh, you know, some of the skills, of course, that they. But like, just think from like a very young you know person here that wants to be that in like 15, 20 years from now, maybe, you know, and, the, and like, what are some tips that they should have in mind starting kind of like, you know, fresh and young in the industry? Follow your dreams. That's the, follow your dreams. If you, you put your dreams, your heart, and you have determination, you have a, a work hard to get your dream. Mm. Sometimes they come true. So follow your dream. That's the, the reason I'm here like a sport director because right. I had a dream and uh, I work hard to get them. Absolutely. I get my, my dream. So I think that that's the more main important thing that I, I can tell the young people. And I all the times I tell the young people here in Brazil and uh, wherever I, 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 I am. So I think uh, you have to actually, uh, you have to be strong with yourself to get your dream so work hard don't never give up you have main stones that you have to take out of your you but you must to work hard and you, someday you will get it and uh, it's so pleasure when you you get and uh, well that's that's what i i have most important for me follow your dream you know it's, yes uh, I mean, like, it's it, it's a perfect way to, to wrap up this podcast, I think, Alex. And uh, I wanted to thank you, you know, once again for, for taking the time for, you know, sharing a piece, you know, of, of your journey and a story. And I mean, like, I, I think we could touch upon a lot of these stories that you have, you know, and maybe we have to do like a... You know another podcast you know sometime down the road here and uh, oh, it's a pleasure and, and and maybe do like a full i don't know maybe we could do like a, even like uh you know table with a with a, with, a, with, a, with a few like sports directors you know and just you know share like some good stories you know i think it would be a yeah. lot of fun you know get that backside of... backside story okay, okay. let's do <laughs> that awesome and um and yeah i mean like to to sort of like you know finish up here i i do have a I guess uh, a tradition that we're doing here usually on the Sporting Global podcast. And so I have to learn you a little bit of Norwegian, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. It's good. It's going to be fine. It's okay. going to be fine. But uh, okay. so with every video we do, we always finish with Visnakes, which means see you later in Norwegian. Visnakes? There you go. Yeah, it's easy. You see? Oh, Perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, now, simple. now you in Portuguese now. <laughs> Até a próxima. You say Até a próxima. Até a próxima. Wow, you speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate thank you. it, and we'll uh, we'll talk very soon. And for those of you you know that have been here all the way at the end, you know, make sure to like the video if you haven't subscribe as well, and make sure to sign up at SportingGlobal.com to connect with Alex to like find great opportunities and uh, start your career in the sport industry. All right, thank you so much, Alex, and we'll uh, we'll talk soon. <laughs> thank you.